you. I hated you. I think is his world record. And, uh, world record. So that's all he's going to do. He'll just wander around. Just uh, I think it adds a little learn. excitement. So while you're holding animals, uh, there's animals wandering around. Just don't step on me. Okay. All right, really quickly, this is a water dog. Uh, this is the dumpy tree frogs. If you hold. Guys, please be For some of you guys that weren't in my class, I'm going to do this very carefully. Yeah. Okay, you're not talking. Alright, or I'm not going to let you hold any of these things. Okay, so there's very specific rules you have to follow. I just realized that some of you weren't here, so mm -hmm. it's going to take you a little bit longer, especially if I have to keep stopping you. Are you talking to me? Anyone Anyways, dumpy tree frogs. These are from Australia. And they call them that because as they get really big, they look kind of chubby. So they call them dummy. Now, uh, and that's an Australian term. So these uh, can be held, but if you remember, you have to wash your hands with the soap that's on the wall, that foam soap. Okay? You've got to get all of the soap off, really good, rinse it off really well, and then you can stick your hands down in here. They jump really, really far because they're free frogs, so you have to hold them down inside the container. Okay? And they'll try to climb up your arm, you know, just block them, pick them up, put them back down, but they stick uh, really well. So you don't just jerk them off or you'll rip their arms off. They're very, very fragile. And you'll see uh, when you pick them up, their arms are very long, their legs are very long and slender, and there's not you know, much to them. So just to, they don't go back, no. And the water dog is the same thing. You have to use soap. These are the only things that you have to make sure everything's washed off. If you use hand sanitizer on your hands and you stick it in there, it will kill the frogs. Okay? And so the, these are, you know, I'm trusting you guys to follow the rules so they don't die. And I have had stuff over the years where I've told people to do that, and the next day the animal died. And so I know that somebody did something wrong. Okay? And I, I've had frogs die like that, and I've had millipedes die like that. Because you can't drop a millipede or they'll die, usually within a day or two. So the water dog has to stay in the water to breathe, but you can remember kind of hold him, let him crawl through your fingers as long as it's in the water. Okay? Uguay, you can pick him up at any time, you know, and hug him, take pictures of him, pet him on the back. Uh, when you touch him on his back, it feels like somebody touching your head. Okay? They, they can feel that. Even though it's a hard shell, it is part of their backbone. Okay? So they, they recognize the touch and they can be petted. Okay, this is Splinter. Remember, he's a big uh, rat snake. So he stretches around a lot and tries to grab hold of things. You've got to be very careful with him. Uh, he got all twisted up in the blinds. Uh, for Mr. Scott's class, I, I didn't say that. And uh, I've already gone over this before, if you guys have held him in my class. But he got all twisted and stuck, and the kids were panicking. And I look over, and they're like, Mr. Morris, help. And the thing was all twisted around. And so he'll grab hold of stuff, he'll pull things off the desk with his tail, because he's arboreal. Okay? It's not his fault, he's just exploring. So uh, make sure you keep him away from things, and don't let him go into your pockets or your shirt. He's just he'll do the same thing. When he gets stuck in there, it's very hard to get out. That's Scooby. This is like the really fast version of everything. Uh, and the white bucket right here is Taco. You guys remember Taco? Yes. Taco. Taco is a really small, well, he's a boa. But he's a full-grown adult. So this is a Mexican rosy boa. This is Taco. He's very, very soft, nice, easy to hold. This is a bean, the snoring gopher snake. Okay, you cannot hold the tarantulas right now. They're just here to take pictures of them. There's a rose here and a desert tarantula. You can hold the millipede, but you have to hold the millipede right over the container. So if he falls, he lands in the soft substrate. Sometimes they'll curl up in a ball and just roll off your hand because they get scared. If he hits the table, uh, he will die the next day. And I've had numerous millipedes die over the years because people did that. Okay? So just if you're not sure, if you guys see somebody doing something wrong, just don't remind somebody, go, oh, you got to hold it over the container. Okay, that's all it takes. So we can all help each other. The cockroaches, have we ever held cockroaches? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay, really quickly, crash course into holding cockroaches. Uh, everybody listen really carefully. Shh. Whoa. Yeah, they'll hiss when you first pick them up. So you just get them to kind of walk onto your arm. And see, they have these little claws, so they, they're always sticking to you. Okay, they're not, they'll climb right up glass, everything. But they're very easy to hold. 
you just don't want to let them climb up under your sleeve because they'll try to do that but you just they're slow so you just gently stop them and move them back on and put them in the container okay now their their claws will stick into your skin so they're kind of hard to get out sometimes but you can just go like that and stick them on the things or transfer to somebody else okay if you're really afraid of this let somebody else that's done it and that's not afraid help you and while you're holding them make sure that the other ones don't crawl out okay there's six of them in there okay uh moving on mater this is the first time i've ever let classes hold mater so he's a truck walla. the best way is to put him in your hand like this and then take your other hand and cup it around his back okay and it makes him feel really comfortable so he'll stop flipping out okay do not put your finger in front of his mouth i, I don't think he would bite but we don't want to give him a chance to right ben anyways <laughs> This is Mr. Scott's Bearded Dragons. I gave these to him when they were little babies. Uh, this is Armorello. She is missing one of her arms because her siblings bit off when she was a baby. Uh, they, they all need each other. Okay? But even though she's missing that, you can put her on your shirt, and so you can put him too. And I think this is, this is Barbosa. Uh, Mr. Scott speaks Spanish, and the, what does Barbosa mean? Uh, nobody knows him? Beard. beard. Yeah, so he's got a big black beard when he's uh, in mating mode. And yeah, that's why they're called bearded dragons. So they're like, they're all black and puff out. Okay? This is not their baby, but it is a baby. This is Flames. Flames is uh, only a few months old. He's a newborn baby. This is uh, an animal that I've had uh, since he was born, and he's the first time you guys get to see him. Okay? And uh, he's very easy to hold, but they can jump every once in a while, so you need to hold him down over this container. So if he does fall or jump, he'll fall into it. This one, you cannot hold. This is the last one. These are uh, uh, Western banded geckos, what they're called. And so these ones, you can pull this little thing off and see the geckos under there. You can kind of touch them and pet them. Just don't pull on the tail because it'll fall off. And uh, don't, the lifespan. don't uh, pick them up. I, I can't really pick them up. And the lip gets down because you can't clean glass. Okay. So these are just to look at them here. Don't touch them. This is Mr. Scott's uh, uh, poison dart frog. The variety is called a bumblebee poison dart frog. In captivity, they lose their toxicity, so they're technically not poisonous. Uh, they only have the poison because of the ants they eat in the wild in the Amazon jungle. Uh, once they stop eating ants and you give them crickets, they lose all their toxicity. But it's so small and fragile, and they're so sensitive to stuff, you can't. Uh, they're completely different than the jumpy frogs. They're very hardy frogs that can withstand being held. Uh, these guys can't. So, uh, last thing, you can only hold this if you're near, if you're up here and I'm watching you. Oh my goodness. Who's here? Do you guys notice he's almost done a lap? I started right there and he's gone all the way around. He's like right here. doing that, going up. Yeah. Keep your eyes peeled because he sneaks up on you all the time. Right there he is. Okay. Uh, Arizona Reptile Center is uh, okay. Well, it's 30 minutes. Okay. Arizona Reptile Center uh, they donated Scooby to the class and Splinter, and they said that on Reptile Day I can come in and pick a snake from their inventory and I can bring it in to show you. This snake is uh, the price tag on the case at $175. This is a very uh, you know I was kind of surprised that he said I could bring this. This is called a Chihuahua Mountain King Snake. It's named after the uh, state Chihuahua in Mexico. And so these snakes eat other snakes, and that's the other reason we have to keep them up here. If he got close to, uh, mostly, you know, if he got close to Taco, Taco's a Mexican Rosibola in the same area, and he would slurp them down like spaghetti. Okay, without, uh, uh, we probably wouldn't be able to rescue him in time, because he, he, they eat them so quickly. Okay. So just keep them up here and use hand sanitizer between, between each snake just to help keep the smell from one snake to another off one. But this snake is really, really nice. And uh, if you want to hold it and take pictures, this is the first time I've ever had one of these snakes on reptile day. Okay. So once uh, you've held a few things, come up here and I'll let you hold this one. Okay. And uh, this one doesn't have a name because it's a you know, it for sale. But if you're interested in buying a snake, they're the best. Arizona Reptile Center, <laughs> Dobson and Broadway. 